everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. We have a fun day planned today for us and for the baby pigs. We're going to expand their pen today, probably quadruple or more the size of what they have right now. We're going to be doing it all with electric fence, so it'll also be a day to find out whether or not the training that we've been doing with them has paid off. Not too long ago, we sold our goats, which has given us more room off to the side of where these baby pigs are at. So we'll be expanding their pen to include uh, where we had our mailbox and actually beyond that. It's actually a really nice space for them. We'll be using the same electric fencing system that we're using for our sows and that we've used for our pigs uh, for the last two years prior to this, and it's worked really well. Right, basically we're going to be using either three or four strands, I haven't decided yet, we'll see how it goes up, uh, of just plain galvanized electric wire. Uh, the highest one will only be probably 15 inches or so off the ground, but that's plenty high for pigs. And uh, it'll be a pretty simple project, I'm excited to get it done. I know these guys are dying to have more room, and the area that we're expanding to actually has a lot of grass growing. So since these are pasture pigs, I haven't been cutting that grass at all. I've been letting it grow nice and long, so I'm sure they're gonna be excited to be over there and start being able to graze on some of that grass. So it's a beautiful day, but it's a little bit of a windy day. Hopefully you guys will be able to hear us okay, but we thought this is something you guys would wanna see. So we made sure to bring the camera out. So we are going to get started. We cannot wait to let these pigs loose out here to explore. The first thing we're going to do is actually dig a wallow for them. There's an area where our pigs were last year that's part of this area, uh, and they had started to dig a wallow last year, so I'm gonna just bring the tractor over, make that a little bit bigger, so when it rains, it fills up with water for these pigs, and they'll have a nice place to cool off. We can fill it up with the hose if we have to. That's the first thing we're gonna do. Let's get to work. Well, this ground right here is really rocky, so a bucket isn't really the right thing to be digging big holes with, but this is plenty deep, and over time, the pigs will make it even deeper. So that's a good spot for them. At least they'll have something that'll fill up with water, and they'll be able to play around in and, and cool off. All right, let's get started putting up the fence. We have the first two posts in. What I'm gonna do now is tie a piece of rope. We're gonna basically rope off the perimeter so we know where to put the rest of our posts and so I know where to mow the grass to keep it away from the fence that we're gonna be putting up. And then we'll be able to get a good visualization of what size the pen is going to be.
All right, we've got this all roped off. We've got everything cut and we're ready to start putting in our poles. Now I know you guys are gonna ask because I don't think I've ever showed the string trimmer on videos before. This thing is awesome, especially if you're doing a lot of electric fence. It's basically like a big weed eater on wheels and it's perfect for getting below the lowest wire on electric fence. Uh, it just works really well. I think I picked this up last year at Menards when they had them on clearance. Uh, so I got a good deal on it and it is a great tool to have. That along with the post driver, man, it just makes working so much easier. The right tools for the right job, it just makes life so much easier. So we're gonna put the rest of these poles in. For pigs, we don't need them super close. We're gonna pull this pretty tight and ideally they're never gonna touch the fence anyway. So we're going to put them probably about every 20 feet. All of our posts are in and it's time to start putting the insulators on all of the posts so we can start running the wire now on this first post here this is where we're going to really be pulling hard on the wire so what i did is i went ahead and i attached this post to the feeding station so this is really strong here and then i've also gone ahead and i've put my uh, tensioners on here now we're going to be doing four strands of electric wire for this fence uh, mostly because these pigs are still pretty young and I want to make sure that there's plenty of wire to make sure they don't get out. So we're doing four strands. We're doing them every four inches. So we're going to do four, eight, 12, and 16. So I've got four of these tensioners hooked up here. Now our electric wire will go on here. When, it, when we get it all run, we'll be able to wind this tight and wind that right up to pull the fence tight. From here back, uh, this is, you know, this is metal on metal. This, isn't, this won't be electrified right here. So we're gonna go, we're gonna start putting the insulators on each of the posts, and then we'll be able to start putting the wire up. Let's go do the first post and I'll show you what we're doing. So here's our first T-post. Again, we're doing four strands, so I'll need four T-post insulators. I'm gonna be using these called lock jaw insulators. Uh, we've used these before. We've used them when we did our cow, our cow fence, and I do really like them, uh, mostly because they're so universal. They're a little different design than most T-post insulators, but the nice thing about these is that they can go on any part of the pole. They can go on the front, the back, the side, kind of diagonally, and they're just really useful. So we're, again, we're gonna do every four inches. So we're gonna do basically every two knobs up. So the first one will go here. We'll skip two. Just like that, they just snap on. That's the spacing that our four wires will be. And we're just gonna do this on all of the poles and then we'll be able to be ready to start putting up wire. All of our T-post insulators are on, so it's time to start putting on our wire. Now again, we're using just galvanized electric wire. I've got a bunch of used wire that we've taken down from other fences that I 
just wound on this uh, thing here. This is what we're going to use. It's going to be just fine for the pigs. Pigs are so easy to control with electric fence because of their wet nose. It doesn't take them long at all to learn to respect an electric fence. So uh, this is going to be great. Plenty strong for them even when they get big. We're going to start putting this up. This is the last piece of wire. So for these tensioners, the wire just slides through. Just make a little loop on the end there and it comes back through again. And these are basically kind of like a, like a ratchet strap. So as you wind it, it's got a ratchet on there so it doesn't let it come back out. So we'll just wind that up tight and then we'll go back and we'll tighten all of these really nice and tight. Get a lot of tension on all of the wires. Okay, so those are all up, nice and tight, or plenty tight. Now, these aren't like high tensile wire where you're gonna really make them so tight that, you know, it's like a guitar string. But these are plenty tight, they're not drooping at all, they're not hanging on the ground. I'm gonna just walk it one more time now and just look and make sure everything looks right. If there's any spots that seem really, you know, extra high or low, we might adjust some of the insulators uh, based on that. Um, you just kind of eyeball it, it's not an exact science. Like I said, our pigs aren't really small anymore, so I'm not worried about, you know, one being super close to the ground. Our pigs aren't gonna be able to get under here without touching it with their nose. So that's, that's gonna be no problem at all. I'm gonna walk it and then we'll be ready to hook it to the electric. Now there's some spots like this in between two T-posts where there's kind of a dip in the ground. Instead of putting another T-post, what I like to do is I always have a bunch of these fiberglass poles on hand with uh, just these screw-on insulators. And you can really adjust these up and down nicely. So in a spot like this, I'll find where the biggest gap between the lowest wire and the ground is and I'll pound one of these in there. And then I can slide these insulators on. Might need to loosen the wire, we'll see. Nope. And then these just slide up and down and I can adjust that wire between the two T-posts. And then just tighten that up. They just screw to tighten. And then that'll hold that wire. Now there's kind of a dip in that wire that follows the ground and that makes it a lot nicer. There, that's much better now. There's a lot less space at the bottom, right in line with the others. Let's keep walking and see if there's any more of those that we need to do. 
we've been out here working all afternoon on this or at least for the last few hours these pigs have slept the entire time it's crazy to me i don't know if you can see hank but hank's the one in the middle he's actually sleeping with his tongue hanging out these guys are crazy last thing that i need to do is run just a little piece of jumper wire from their current electric fence to the new fence and then we'll be just about ready to let them out and see how they like their new freedom. All right. Everything is set up. I've now put the jumper wire on. I've gone and turned the electric fence back on. And let's test this out and see. We well, need to make sure. Normally, you need to have at least 4,000 volts to, you know, work with a pig. Let's see what we have. Oh, yeah. Perfect. 8,000. 8,000. That's perfect. That will give them quite a jolt if they hit it, but I bet each of them will only do it once if they do it at all. They've already had this running inside of their other pen here, so really they probably won't even touch this ever. So the last thing we have to do is to take off part of their fence here and to see if they'll come out. Now, I made kind of a classic mistake here but it really wasn't my fault because we never planned on expanding the pen in this direction. When we originally built their pen here, their starter pen, out of these panels, and we ran the electric fence along the inside to train them, that's all good, but I ran it around this whole side, not thinking that someday we may take one of these panels off to try to let them out. So, there's a chance they're going to be afraid to cross through here even once we take the panel off because they might still think the electric fence is there. I don't know whether or not that's going to happen. I may take the panel off and they may just run right through knowing that the fence is gone. We'll see. That's the next step. That's what I'm doing. I'm setting you free. All right, this is the last clip holding the, this cattle or this hog panel to a T-post. I'm going to move it out of the way and we'll see what happens. Now I'm only going to remove this middle panel, we're going to leave the others up. I don't think they're going to mess with them, I still left some electric wire by them. But next year when we start with new piglets, they'll start in this pen again. So I'll put that panel back up to start them just in here. That's the safest thing to do with little bitty pigs. And then when they get bigger like this, we'll take that off and let them have that whole area. But you notice... They're kind of afraid to cross that line where the fence used to be. That's because they learned their lesson with the electric fence. I might have to kind of chase them through. We'll give them a minute to see if they discover it on their own. I think they're just too interested in the grass. Oh, here comes Pickles. I probably should have mowed a little path right here so that they could see the world on the other side of that tall grass. I guess I forgot how short they are.
Now to review, for those of you who haven't been watching us for a long time, the types of pigs that we're raising here are called Idaho Pasture Pigs. They're a registered breed of pig that was developed specifically to, to prefer grass over like rooting around and eating stuff from underneath the ground. They actually prefer to eat grass so they don't do nearly as much damage and their size is better for a homestead like ours. What, what's supposed to happen is they're supposed to get up to the 200 to 250 pound range, uh, which is butcher size, in the same amount of time as a standard hog. But then at full grown, they're only about 350 to 400 pounds. We bought these three that we're raising this year for food for our family. And then we're also raising, we have two sows and a boar, so we'll be having piglets in the spring. Well, I think this made their day. <laughs> I think it's going to make the rest of their summer. Right. I am really happy. This is our favorite way to raise pigs with just electric wire like this. And that way they can have a nice big area. It gives them a lot more freedom. And I think it's just a really fantastic way to raise them. If you are going to be raising pigs on your homestead, I highly encourage you to learn how to use the electric fence. When we first started homesteading, I thought it was pretty scary stuff. I didn't know anything about it, but there are just a ton of great videos out there that'll teach you everything you need to know. It's not hard at all. And once you get the hang of putting up electric fence, it is so much faster and cheaper than traditional fencing. You guys, I hope you enjoyed spending some time with us today, expanding the pig pen. If you're enjoying what you're seeing, make sure to hit the subscribe button below. And the best way that you can help us here on the homestead is to share our videos on your social media. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.